Um, hello everyone, thank you for inviting me and thank you for coming um, to this first panel as well. So I'm Sarah Holland, I'm an assistant professor in the history department um, and I'm at the University of Nottingham. And this is very much um, some of my initial reflections on my experiences using Talis Elevate. Um, and also, I suppose, very important, reflecting on this from a discipline specific um, context, but also the sort of wider implications of using this at the height of lockdowns and socially distanced um, teaching. And then the wi uh, wider implication now going forward for the future, where I see that as, as well. So if you could have the next slide, please. Um, I guess the key thing here is like thinking about this in a disciplinary context, the key contextual point is that the central role that primary sources and primary source analysis play in the study of history, and that could be objects, images, more traditional documentary sources, whether printed or handwritten, are the centre of the study of history, historical research, and significantly the approaches to teaching and learning in history as well. Now, this could, of course, be a very solitary pursuit and can often be the perception of what hist historians are doing in archives and libraries. But in terms of the history seminar, we really encourage this social and collaborative approach to studying the primary sources, um, reading and thinking about the sources together. Um, and as literature on social annotation suggests, you know, the source itself becomes a richer learning object by having those different voices um, engaging with that. And that's certainly been my experience. But the, the issue sort of in, in a contextual sense was traditionally we print off copies of sources or take students to, to archives to look at them. If we've got printed off copies, we get them in groups, annotating them with pen, pencil, highlighters. Um, and then we were increasingly moving to digital copies of those sources available via a virtual learning environment. And we saw a marked change in how students were engaging with those source materials, how they were actually discussing them. Um, and there certainly the, the tended to be, in some cases, less annotation, but certainly less discussion because it became a very private and individual thing. Um, and even though we were supporting them and looking at ways to do that, um, it was very much in a transitory state as we were going into the pandemic. So, you know, it's simply getting students to sit around with a Word document and collaborating on it um, would be a, a step forward. But there was still a sense that that social um, element was being lost in that environment. So um, next slide, please. So. There was already some great work going on in history in terms of social annotation. Colleagues such as Anna Richabad, who's also at Nottingham, and Jamie Wood at Lincoln, done some fantastic work on this. So there was there was really good practice and there was really great potential. And I saw the inspiration for my own work. But really, it was the pandemic that was the catalyst for this for me, um, because it, it sort of brought the impetus for needing to do this. Um, we, we moved our teaching online, as so many people did, but also when we were on campus, it was socially distanced or hybrid. And that idea of studying history becoming a solitary pursuit, where you've got a seminar with 20 people who are in a lecture theatre scattered around, um, was, was very challenging for that collaborative um, experience. So using Talis Alivate was a was a really important enabler for social annotation, um, even when students were not in the same room or if they were socially distanced. It was fostering that sense of community and conversation in a way which was impossible with the circumstances at that time. Um, the next slide, please. So I want to talk a little bit about the, the specific case study that was most successful with this annotation during this period. It was a third year special subject, so about 20 students were using a wide variety of sources about the British countryside, um, including uh, paintings, objects and written sources. The technology was new to the students, but also some of the sources were new to students as well, at least to some of the students in that group. Um, so it was very much about modelling the approach using sample annotations, which not only introduced the technical um, skills, but the different layers of annotation ensuring that um, even with visual sources, we were moving beyond the observations to the critical analysis and using the varied, varied perspectives that came from the assigned readings. Um, and you could do this in a very visual way because you've got not only a visual source, but visual at the front of the room, getting people to put things in and then saying, there's a lot of observations about this. 
what can we add to it? And you can sort of develop the analytical skills through that. Another element was posing questions as prompts, um, not just simply asking questions about the source, but prompting them to think about it from different aspects of the topic that we were studying, different perspectives, either from the time that we were studying or from the different historiographical debates, or just looking at different parts of the document and seeing how you can build build that, that picture up collaboratively from that. Um, and the quality of analysis, then we could we we could as a group, not just just myself, but as a group, see that becoming more sophisticated and the quality of that analysis becoming more developed as a as a result. And I'll talk a little bit about the sort of student feedback and the the, the positives of that in a minute. But if you could have the next slide, please. And um, this idea of returning to normality. Um, certainly for me, I didn't just return to my old ways of doing things. Um, this is now embedded in my teaching and learning. I saw the potential beyond the socially distanced classroom and hybrid classroom, but it's almost I needed to be thrown into that environment to try it out to realise its potential. Um, but since then, I've experimented in very different contexts. So, for instance, um, a large first year survey module with approximately 350 students. Um, I use this in a lecture as students to work in small groups. Um, and then add comments to the source that was displayed on the large screen at the front of the lecture hall. Um, and then we could discuss it um, along the way, similarly in the seminars for that. And similarly in a smaller but second year option module, we did that. But I also started to look beyond the primary sources to documents like the assessment criteria for modules, especially in year one. Um, when you say read the assessment criteria, you've read it. Oh, yes, we've understood it. Have you understood what we're actually asking from different types of assessment? We could see that process again by adding those comments on there as well. And so I've seen different uses as going through that process as well. Um, and then the final slide, please. Matthew. Um, so here's some reflections based on student feedback. It's, it's very much been anecdotal feedback so far, um, but very positive. This idea that it has stimulated student engagement, it's created and fostered an engaging learning environment and that it's encouraged and promoted critical thinking and collaboration in that critical thinking. There's a sense of ownership, um, something students want to return to because they've been part of that and helped create it. Um, and the value of engaging with those different perspectives in real time, making sense of a document and learning how others are making sense of that document at the same time um, has been incredibly um, valuable. Um, I would say, though, that there are still some challenges and areas for further development because, of course, um, there's been some inconsistency in some rollout. It hasn't always worked so successful. Some contexts have been much more successful than others. Um, there are some concerns in some contexts about sharing that knowledge and ideas so collaboratively as well. Um, and I suppose one of the, the ongoing things is the extent of conversation and the extent that it is social annotation. Um, that sometimes that works incredibly well and there really is a conversation going on. Sometimes there are maybe two people commenting on something and it's not really and it's and therefore I've seen that that's my role facilitating those connections and sharing those thoughts and sort of highlighting things and asking for follow up. And that's been productive, but just thinking about how there could be more conversation actually on the analysis itself as well. Thank you. <laughs>